welcome. I'm Susan Pernimark and I'm a textile artist uh, working on the west coast of Canada. In this video I want to talk about my methods of coloring cloth using artist canvas, acrylic paints, and thermofax screens as well as stencils. And it's about building up layers of color and pattern and texture. And in the description, you'll see some of my sources and uh, let's get started. To begin with uh, this section of coloring cloth, I'm going to be using an unprimed artist canvas. This is a seven ounce canvas. It's very inexpensive. I buy it by the foot and I think it's two dollars or so in it usually is about 60 or 75 inches wide and it's one of the lightest canvases so you can see that it's fairly flexible the 7 ounce then there's a 10 and a 12 ounce and the 12 ounce is really quite sturdy but you could use uh, cottons linens you could use even synthetic fabrics uh, for painting on your fabric what I start with is applying a clear gesso. So this is like a white gesso, but it's clear, so it does not affect the appearance of the fabric. And I dilute the gesso about 75%. So 25% gesso and 75% water and I keep it just in a yogurt container and then stir it up uh, when I need it. Don't try and keep it for too long. It does kind of get a little smelly or punky and uh, I think maybe it goes off or something, but I try you know, every couple of weeks to replenish this and I've got a lot of fabric I need to gesso in the future. And so I've got this on my print table. You can see underneath. And a print table is a soft surface that you can pin into if I'm concerned about the fabric moving around at all. I can just pin in the corners and it'll keep it stable. I do have a video on making a print table and it's great for screen printing, stamping, and lots of different other purposes. And it's not going to be a perfect application. I'm just going to move across the surface and I'm not trying to make it really even at, in the application. I just want to uh, put that on the surface. Now I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it does seal the fabric a bit and it also so that the paint that I apply later doesn't just disappear into the fabric. The second reason is that it provides a bit of tooth or a bit of um, a surface for the for the paint to adhere to. And I do use a, dedica a dedicated brush for applying the gesso make sure you rinse it out. Gesso is a kind of acrylic, so if you don't rinse out your brushes, they'll dry as stiff as a board. And I'm going to let this fabric dry and then get on to the next layer. Now for this, I've chosen four colors that have a variety of values. So I've got something fairly light, which is the Naples yellow, I've got a Payne's Gray towards the dark, a uh, green, and a magenta that has a bit of a shimmer. And so you want to work with a variety of values, but also maybe you'd like a color scheme. Mine, as you can see, are, are the primaries and then one secondary color. And I always start with the lightest color, add some water, have it moving across the surface. You can always add in more colors if you choose and 
mix your colors well they're going to be mixed on the fabric anyway but just cover most of the fabric and you may have a pattern in mind that you would like to work with for this particular method that I use I want just all over color lots of movement across the surface because I know that all of this canvas will be cut up so there's not not so much anything identifiable now I've run out of this emerald color so I'll move on to the pinky magenta and put it in spots, letting it blend in. You know, color mixing is a, a good idea. And it's fun to see all the different combinations and how they interact with each other. Now I'll move on to the Payne's Gray. I have a layer of plastic in my paint tray. Uh, I'm kind of restricted where I live as to the amount of water that I can use. So I try to be judicious about rinsing things afterwards, such as trays and brushes and that. So I, with this, I use up everything in the wrap. It's actually Glad Press and Seal. And if there's any paint left over, I'll put it onto some paper and use that later on for collage. That's it for now. Now I'm going to let it dry and we'll come back and do more. So the next step that we're working with to put um, color onto our cloth and in this step we're really focusing on adding pattern and texture with a couple of different products. For one I have some Thermofax screens with uh, designs that I have created. There's another one with little tiny dots in it. And I've got some stencils that I have made and some sequin waste. So these stencils are made from stencil film. You could use something like mylar. You want it to be fairly thin. And what I tend to do is I put um, an image underneath here and basically just cut it out with an art knife. And uh, I like to very often have the same design in several different sizes. So if I'm working smaller or larger. So with the Thermofax screens, the open areas are the circles in here. And I'm just going to take a spoonful of the paint and run it across there. And I'm starting in the center of the fabric and I'll move out into different directions, maybe sometimes rotating or staggering the design. And so I like a paint that's fairly uh, thick, fairly viscous, and you can see the design coming through there. And I'll just stagger it. Make sure you let each layer dry in between uh, so that you're not smearing the paint. So I've done three layers of color with circles, different kinds of circles. And now I'm going to work with a couple of stencils. And as I mentioned, these are ones that I've cut out. And I just use a stencil brush and just slowly get color onto the surface. Now with something like this, where it's just a repeated pattern over and over again, I could choose to use some of the shapes of the stencil or maybe uh, not all of them. Or I could use, do a row, skip a row like this so that I have some variation in what you're seeing. So visually that is a little more interesting than just a solid block. Okay, so I've added five layers in total, or six if you include the background. And one last one that I'm going to do 
is using something called a tea juice fabric marker. They come in a variety of colors and I have just black, but what I also have is some empty ones that you can buy um, online and I fill them. You can take the little end off here and fill it up with um, some ink or, or something really quite fluid. You don't want to put acrylic ink in it because it will dry and clog the, um, the little dabber. It's like a bingo marker. And so what I do with this is squeeze it a bit and I find it more interesting to put them in groups. So three or four is kind of nice and just scatter them over the surface. So I hope that was a helpful introduction and I look forward to hearing comments. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them and uh, stay tuned for more, more videos. You can check out my website at susanpm.com. Thanks. Thank you.